Hey everybody, this is Russ from RetroGameCore. So a couple weeks ago, I did a video about this new software image called Atom. And the Atom image is basically an all-in-one package that works on all the RG350, RG280, and a few other devices. Well, I'm happy to report that the image has had a bunch of new updates. And so now there are some bug fixes and upgraded tools, as well as some new themes. And so I wanted to take some time today just to go over some of these new features. And in case you already have installed a previous version of Atom, this is also going to work as an upgrade guide as well. So we're going to back up all of our settings, flash new firmware, and then restore all of our settings onto the new card. So that way you have all of your save games and everything else while still enjoying all of the new features available in this version 1.2 image. And you've probably already figured this out, but the Atom image also now works on the RG300X device. So if you own one of these handhelds, you're in luck. All right, enough with the intro, let's go ahead and get started. Now I have a full RG350 and 280 starter guide on my website, and it'll walk you through how to update Atom. So I'll leave a link to that in the video description, but the first thing you want to do is go to the Atom page on GitHub. There you want to download all of these files, starting with the config.ini file, and then the Atom image itself. There's going to be two images available right now. One is for most devices, but if you have a Pocket Go version 1, you'll want to use the other one. So go ahead and download the image that you need. There's also an Atom image cheat sheet. We're going to check that one out as well, so let's download that too. Now, the Atom image itself is about 500 megabytes. So while that's downloading, let me talk a little bit about the new features in this updated software image. So first things first, some of the backend stuff has been updated. So the OpenDingX beta, which this runs on, has now been updated. And it also uses the latest version of RetroArch for this device. They've also made some compatibility fixes. So for example, the RG300X is now supported. And they've also distinguished between the Play Go and Pocket Go version 2 and the version 1, which we saw had its own image now. This new version of Atom also has improved RetroArch settings and greater emulated system support. On top of that, this integrates the latest version of Simple Menu, which has a new underlying control scheme to it, and also has two new themes. We'll check that out here later in this video. And finally, and maybe even most importantly, this new update resolves that crashing bug that would happen when you exited games. So if you were using a previous version of Atom, and when you hit Select and Start, it would freeze a game, this new update has resolved that issue. This is a really great update, because a few people have reported that they've had corrupted cards from having to kill their apps all the time after a game freezes. So hopefully this will make the entire platform much more stable. Okay, so now that Atom is done downloading, let's check out some of these files that we downloaded. The first thing I want to show you is that Atom image cheat sheet. And this is a tool made by someone in the community that basically summarizes all the hotkeys available within the Atom image. So you're going to see things like the OpenDingX commands, which work system-wide, things like increasing the brightness or putting the device into sleep mode. You also have the RetroArc commands, which will give you those emulator commands like fast forward and pausing and restarting the game. And then down below, you have all the simple menu commands. These are the buttons you're going to press when you're in the user interface. And then finally on the right, you have all the other commands for the standalone apps that are supported within the Atom image. So that's a pretty cool resource to have handy. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to assume that you already have an Atom image and that you want to upgrade to the latest one. If you've never flashed Atom before, then I would recommend checking out my older video, which I'll also have linked in the video description, which will walk you through that initial baseline process. In this video, we're going to do an upgrade because that's a little bit different of a process since I want to make sure that we back up all of our save games. So first thing you want to do is grab your external microSD card. This is the one that stores all of your game files. Go ahead and put it into your USB card reader and then plug it into your computer. Now here, anywhere you want, just go ahead and put that config.ini file that we just recently downloaded. Then eject your SD card, put it back into your device. One clever trick here is that instead of holding down the power button, if you just tap the reset button, it's also going to power on the device. So nine times out of 10, that's actually what I press instead of the power button because it's much faster. Okay, so here we are in our regular user interface. We're going to want to go to the apps and games section and then tab over to the application section. In here, we're going to go into the Commander app, which is our file browser. Now, Commander has two windows on the left and on the right. On the left, you want to have that config.ini file showing, the one we just put on the card. And then on the right, we're going to navigate to where we're going to restore this file. We're going to go into the .py backup folder. Once these are both showing, go over to the one on the left, press the X button, and then select Move. It's going to ask you, do you want to replace it? And you say, yeah, man, I want to do it. After that, you're actually done. Press Y and then navigate to Quit. And then we're going to go into the Pi Backup tool itself. And in here, you can see all these different things that it allows you to back up. 
And that config file that we just installed onto this app is basically telling PyBackup what specific files we're going to want to back up. So you don't need to do anything other than just back up what it has selected. So press the B button and then press A to confirm. It's going to take a second, but as you see, things are going to move from red to white, which means they're being backed up. And that's it. Go ahead and press start to exit the app and then start, then A to shut down the device. And we have now successfully backed up all of our save games onto the external micro SD card. Now we can flash the internal SD card with the new Atom image. So let's take that out and put it into our computer. When you first plug it in, you're going to get all these errors here. It's because it's trying to read the Linux partition, which it can't. Just close out of all these windows. We're going to use the Belena Etcher app to flash the new Atom image. So select the file, then grab the Atom image. And then if it doesn't show your SD card right here, go ahead and select it and then choose flash. It'll take a couple minutes to flash. I'm just going to fast forward this part for you. And there you go. Once it's done, it's going to show you a bunch of errors again, but it's also going to eject your SD card. So what you want to do is close out of all these windows as well as Belena Etcher and then unplug your SD card and then plug it right back in. You're going to get these same errors again. Just go ahead and hit cancel. And you know what? Let me show you how to fix this error so you don't have to see it in the future. You're going to want to use an app called Disk Genius. So if you don't have that installed, I'll have a link in the written guide, but then pull this up. And then under the SD card on the left, you're going to see two partitions. And one of them is going to be an ext4 partition. That's our Linux partition. All you want to do is right click on that and then select remove drive letter. Now your Windows machine is not going to try to read that partition at all. It's going to make things a lot easier for you in the future. Okay, so while we have this window open, now we need to associate the Atom image with a specific device model. So you're going to open up the select kernel.bat file, and then you're going to have all the options of the supported devices. I'm going to be using this on the RG280V, so I'm going to select one and press enter, and then you can press any other key to get out of this window. From there, you can eject the SD card, and then let's put it right back into our device. And there you go. So now we're back into the Atom image. One thing I have noticed is that when you first boot it up, the screen is going to be a little bit dark. So if you hold down power and then press right on the D-pad, that'll adjust the brightness. Okay, so now let's restore all of those backups that we created earlier. We're going to go into the apps and games section again, then applications, and then directly into Pi Backup. Once this is here, all you have to do is press X to restore your files. Press A to confirm, and then it's going to restore all of your save games and configurations, and you're good to go. Now, it won't restore every little thing. For example, if you have a heavily modified version of Simple Menu, it's not going to restore your previous Simple Menu settings. But overall, you're actually done. You've now upgraded to the new Atom image. So now I'm going to take a minute to talk a little bit about the new navigation structure within Simple Menu. I like to think of it in three different layers. You have your section layer, your console layer, and then your system layer. In your section layer, you're going to see different types of consoles. This is where you're going to see things like consoles, arcade games, home computers, handhelds. They're basically different categories of devices. Now you can press A to enter any of these sections, and then you're going to see all of the consoles within that category. So for example, under the console section, you can see all of the different home consoles. And then if you press A again, it's going to show you all the games within that console. So think of it like three layers. You can go three layers in or three layers up. But like I said, it's going to be your sections layer, then your consoles, and then the games or system layer. So if you see yourself in any of these levels, it's very easy to get in and out of those. You just press A or B to go up and down. Now, if you have any questions about how to use Simple Menu, there actually is a help section within the settings. You just press Start to get to the menu and then select Help. And that's going to show you all the different buttons and how they interact with each other. Okay, so while we're still in the Simple Menu settings, let's check out some of the different themes that are now available. So in addition to the standard Big Cody one, as well as the other one that shipped with previous versions called Zero A, there's two new ones. There's one called SimUI as well as Comic Book. Let me show you what the Zero A one looks like first. As you can see here, it's a pretty brightly lit theme, but you may notice there's an addition of a battery indicator on the top right. That's a really handy tool that's now available in Simple Menu. So now let's try the Sim UI one. And this is actually based after the Mini UI theme that was made for the Trim UI Model S device, which I've reviewed on this channel. Now that's a lot of UIs to discuss, but really just think of this as a very simple and clean text-based theme. So if you just want a nice clean experience and no frills, that's a good one. Now the comic book one is a little bit near and dear to my heart. This is a theme that I developed based on one of the more popular emulation station themes. So over the past couple weeks, I've worked to upgrade this on the newest version of Simple Menu. I've also implemented the battery indicator as well as a number indicator of the games within each system. 
On top of that, I've changed out the section groups images, and these ones are based off of Bodicera theme. So overall, I really enjoy this theme because it's a nice mixture of colorful and clean. Of course, you're more than welcome to try any of these themes, or even try your hand at making your own. I'll leave links to some of the other themes that are available in my written guide. Okay, so like I mentioned before, the Atom image now works in the RG300X. So let's test that out and see how it works. We're going to remove both SD cards from the device, and then I'm going to take the internal SD card or the SD1 card and put it back into my computer. And look at this, when I plug it in, you only get one window popping up and no errors. That's because we unassigned the drive letter in the other one. Now we're going to open up that select kernel batch file again, and we're going to change the kernel to the RG300X. Go ahead and close out of this, eject the card, and then put it into the RG300X. And of course you could do this with any other device, the RG350, 350M, and so on. I'm going to power on the device here, and sure enough, it boots. Now again, it's a little bit dark, so I'm going to hold down Start and press right on the D-pad. And sure enough, here's my comic book theme again. The cool thing about this one is it's actually using the 640x480 version of the comic book theme. So it's a lot higher resolution than what you find in the 280V. I'm going to start up a game here. Yep, it works. So let's talk about some of my favorite configurations within the Atom image. First and foremost, all of the Game Boy systems and other handheld systems have a really nice LCD grid overlay. And it's not showing up very well in the video here, but it is fantastic in real life. And one thing I didn't mention in my previous video, but I wanted to show off here, is that you can change the colorization if you want, and it's very simple. What you do is you tap the power button to get into RetroArch, go into Options, and then under Internal Palette, you can change it to whatever value you want here. There's something like 50 different options. For example, let's try the first Super Game Boy colorization here on the list. And this is what it looks like. It's super simple. Personally, I really like the one that comes with the Atom image, but this is where you could play around with those different colorization options. Going back to that grid overlay, look at how nice it looks on the Game Boy Color. This 640x480 screen, despite only being 3 inches across, is absolutely stunning on this device. I wasn't a huge fan of the RG300X when I first reviewed it, but you know this Atom image is starting to change my mind much like it did with the RG280V. Earlier today, I jumped in the car and had to go and run an errand, and I grabbed the RG300X using the Atom image, and I had a wonderful time playing this on the go. And that was honestly the first time that I really enjoyed this device. And a lot of that has to do with the clean and simple experience of using the Atom image. But yeah, overall, things like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and all the handheld systems, they look really good on this 640x480 display of the RG300X. And of course, they look just as good on the RG350M, and the RG280V also looks fantastic. Now the Atom image is not quite perfect yet. For example, OpenDingX Beta is still having an issue with HDMI output. You can see in Simple Menu there's actually an option to boot into HDMI, but when I tried it out, it still doesn't work. So I would say this is the last big feature that I'm hoping for from the Atom image, but other than that, everything else works really well. Now the other day I figured out that Doom mods will actually work on this Atom image, because it runs the RetroArch core of Doom. And so on my written guide, I've actually explained how to set all of that up. It's very simple, but I just wanted to show off here real quick that it is possible on these devices. But while we're at it, let me show you how to set up dual analog controls for this particular emulator. So say you're using something like the RG350P here, you press the power button to get into the RetroArch menu, then go into the control section, then port one controls, and then change the device type to gamepad modern. Now the analog sticks are going to work, but you're going to find that the L1 and R1 buttons are swapped out with the L2 and R2 buttons. So I would recommend scrolling down to that section and then switching out the buttons so that they display as you see here. The L button is run, R button is fire, and then L2 and R2 are quick load and quick save. Now when you control your games, you're going to use the outside shoulder buttons to do your firing and running. That's going to be a lot more comfortable for your hands. So let's resume our game here, and as you can see, I'm using the dual analog controls, no problem. And then also the R1 button, the outside shoulder button, works as my fire button. And that's exactly what I want. Now this version of Dune mods will not support every single mod available. It's only going to support total conversion mods. And not all of them are going to work perfectly. You'll find that there's a little bit of slowdown depending on how graphically intense those mods are. This poor little chipset just really can't keep up. But it's still fun to play around with these. Alright everyone, that's really about it for this video. I just wanted to show you off these new Atom updates, so you can see that there's a new bug fix for that freezing problem, and we have wider compatibility between the different devices. Most importantly, you can now use this with the RG300X. 
And as I already mentioned in my previous Atom image video, I'm super excited and super happy with this image. Because it gives everyday users the ability to just flash this onto a card, load up all of your games, and immediately start playing with a really easy interface and with optimized controls and hotkeys and everything else. I gotta say that over the past two or three weeks that I've been using this Atom image, I've been using the RG350 devices and the RG280V more than any other devices in my collection. And that says a lot because I have way too many of these things. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I'm also curious to know what device you're using the Atom image on. The RG350, 350M, or maybe the RG280V. If you don't mind, I'd love it if you let me know in the comments below. I'm just curious to see what people are using with this image. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.